Hi Siri, I'm looking for a new podcast, one that preferably is hosted by a UF Hall of Famer, uh, one that airs every weekday that would bring me everything I need to know about the Florida Gators, including news, analysis, and opinions. Siri, is there such a show? Have you heard of Pod Up with Matthews in the morning on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or any podcast platform? Oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that? You have Hall of Famer Shane Matthews has a show every weekday. I'm going to go check it out tomorrow. Thanks, Siri. Good morning. It's a live edition. It's a Wednesday edition of Pot Up with Matthews in the morning. <laughs> a tradition like on any other. <laughs> it's that week. <laughs> it is uh, the part three contest today. It cranks up tomorrow. I think the weather's going to be terrible tomorrow. Um, if you missed it last night, Gators get blasted uh, in Tallahassee. Uh, like I told you, I'll go root for the softball team if you got issues. Um, <laughs> spring game is Saturday. Uh, baseball will be hosted in South Carolina this weekend. Baseball, I'm um, softball goes out to Missouri. Let's go to the Titan MR hotline, courtesy of <laughs> courtesy of Comfort Temp. If you want to shoot us a text on the Titan MR text line, it's 352-353-7465. Um, our winner of our contest is Dwayne. He sent a text here. Uh, Dwayne, they will contact you. Um, we'll, we'll discuss the golf. Uh, my schedule is extremely busy, but uh, they'll talk to you, Dwayne, get all your information, and we'll be in touch. Uh, JC, good morning. You're on the Titan MR hotline. Extremely, extremely busy. QB, I yeah. bring good news, though. You know, it, it, you know, it's Gator baseball team sticking up the joint. The Yankees are 10 and 2, best start since 2003, and have the league's third best ERA without the American League Cy Young Award winner, Garrett Cole, at 2.45. This is good news because baseball is important as we get the warmer weather rolling on in. So I, you know, you're only I'm happy there. because the Yankees have a good start. You wouldn't give a damn if the Yankees were 4 and 12. <laughs> I, am right I am happy. They're 10 and 2. That Alex Verdugo is coming through and for you know former Red Sox Juan Soto former <clears throat> Padre coming through these guys are coming through the pitching though is the story for the Yankees and so far nobody's been thrown. So JC, we got a Facebook. Seth Nobody Garrett cares Cole. about the Yankees. We're moving on. Everybody uh, cares about the Yankees. I could care Everybody. less. I, I will tell you right now, the Yankees will not win the East. Well, I can tell you right now, the Yankees will win the World Series. Oh, they have. When's the last time they won that? Who cares? They're gonna win it this year. They got they They're got the win. goods. They got the goods, brother. They got the goods. So anyway, yeah. every game today counts just as much as it does in September. Just keep well, that in mind. When when the Yankees were out of it, you never said any of this. <laughs> well, what okay? the hell? What you want me to talk about a team that's out of it? That's no, no fun. nobody the, the bottom line is nobody wants to talk about major league baseball. Why do you say that? I don't agree. They with don't. That. Yo, oh, why don't is... we talk about why don't we talk about that group you love so much? That went to Tallahassee yesterday and got uh, got run rules. I've, I've never I've never said one thing talk about how much guys. I love them. They're my school, but great. I don't worry about it. There's well, people here about like Greg. About Greg says Sully doesn't know what he's doing. Okay, <laughs> so he takes them to the national title game. He's the all time winningest coach. He doesn't know what he's doing, Greg. I guess you should go coach first base. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> You know, it's, it's okay, guys. I mean, Florida State's dominating them this year, but the, the truth of the matter is, is that you got oh, a coach that's got a, a resume. So, so here, here's a text on the Titan Mark text line. I love the Gators, but said on your podcast the Gators will be run rule. They have they were embarrassing themselves in the University of Florida and the fans. That. Is there any truth to the rumor that Sully may resign at the end of the season? I didn't hear that rumor. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't even heard that. Have you? I haven't heard that rumor. Why Why are we talking about resigning at the end of the season? Because they've, what, lost 15 games? That's not the case. That's not Yeah, and again, again, if they win the series this weekend, yeah. right. they're going to be in, I think, second place in the East. They're 6-6. They're six and six. They could easily be, you know, 8-7. and seven. Yeah, not like you said. Yeah, so, <laughs> look, I, people can argue all they want. If you think you can coach, go coach your high school team and work your way up to college. Sully knows more baseball than we do. Are they any good right now? Absolutely they aren't. But I got told a buddy of mine, I'm not losing a damn bit of sleep over it. Go either. watch softball. I'm not, <laughs> Go I'm watch not, softball. I'm not and softball's fun to watch. I mean, who doesn't love watching Tim Walton beat up on people? So JC, I had yeah. a discussion with Buddy yesterday, and I can't tell you how many text messages on this Titan MR text line. I can't read them all. But Buddy 
says the Gator softball team is not very – they're not very good and they're not elite. Okay. Really? I so just don't I mentioned, why I, I mentioned – why, why not? Did he they're tell you why? They're 34 and 6. <laughs> but the bottom line is <clears> – <throat> So, so I started thinking that the the most elite programs on campus are one is track. There's no oh, yeah. de- denying that. Swing. Track is one. I put softball at two. Gymnastics, you better put gymnastics there. is three okay. because I don't. They, okay. Well, I would put softball and gymnastics as as two and two a. And okay. the reason is. Tim Walton has been here. This is year 19. So in 18 years, they've been to the College World Series, I think, 11 times. They've won two national a, titles. And they played for the national title five times. <laughs> and swimming. Andy, Andy's a big swimmer. I wonder if what Andy's event was. You think he was the uh, backstroke freestyle. guy or the breaststroke free, guy? Free, freestyle. He probably freestyled. Hmm. But can we think Greg, about this? Greg says I'm the clown. Greg, you will get your ass banned. So either <laughs> quit commenting or no, go no watch another show. You mean, don't hey. worry about it. Don't worry about Greg. What I'm saying. I'm not worried is, about Greg. Greg. Greg's a clown. He's the clown because he's the okay. one that just said Sully can't coach. I can read, buddy. So, um, Tim Walt. Okay, we talk about winning. Yeah, his winning percentage at this school. He's a hall. He's already a hall of famer, and he's still coaching. Eighty percent. And and the reality is is that they actually do win the midweek games that everybody worries about, <laughs> and their record, you know, so they have five losses. I don't know. I mean, this is a team that's won the College World Series under this coach. This is a school that just reloads year in and year out. Elite means to me being in the championship hunt on a consistent basis. That's what my definition. Well, he, of elite. his his and argument. Are, well, we're not here to bash on, buddy, but his argument was. Well, well, they haven't I, won a I'm national title on. recently. Well, they I'm won it in well, 14, 15. It doesn't matter. Nobody's beating Oklahoma. So correct. So, but I'm not bashing anybody. I'm just defining what I know <laughs> to be true. The the truth Joe. is this guy Walton, Tim Walton is the most one of the most winningest coaches on a percentage basis of anybody, including the football t- coach and the basketball coach that are Hall of Famers on this campus. Yeah. They Same compete close. for championships just, just about every year. That is my definition of an elite program that competes for championships, and they do. So I, yeah. don't, I don't know what you're looking so, for. So softball has run rule 25 of their 34, 34 wins this season. You're uh, in and Joseph, you're out, man. You're so Joseph, you're out. Has, Joseph has put in his – Joseph is hilarious. He's put in his name for the new baseball coach. He started with his son's T-ball team, and he's coming for his job. <laughs> so. Well – Swimming and diving. Uh, are also Matt very says golf. Pro- golf. I mean, golf won the national title last year. They're having a oh, great year. They won absolutely. again yesterday. Absolutely. Uh, congratulations to JC Deacon and the and the fellas. Uh, I actually will see JC later. Worst, this, not that JC. The other JC later today. Worst, worst facilities in the United States of America <laughs> and one of the best programs competing in the sport. Right. I mean, is that right? Right. So they have I, that. Yeah, the facility is terrible. The greens are outstanding <laughs> though. But, the, but they have nowhere to practice. I think it is absolutely imperative that this school find this program in, in spite of the fact that it is not a revenue maker. Nevertheless, it is imperative to get this program a facility that allows them to, to show it off, much like some of the better teams in golf, Oklahoma State, Texas, Florida State, schools like that. You have to yeah. get Florida that, 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 that fair p- ground to work their – their team together. I mean, this coach, he gets these golfers. You, nobody talks about it. Then they just won a tournament here the other day. I just uh, said that. They won yesterday. They're the, right. They're defending national champions. I mean, come on. Yeah. Uh, Gator Ken on YouTube brought to you by Quality Plum says swimming and diving are up there. Yeah. I left uh, my man, Anthony Nesty, who was here when I was here. I always leave them out. And that's my fault. Uh, Mr. Biz Biz says that's why I don't get on social media anymore. Some Gator fans are ridiculous. Uh, text on the Titan or text line from a wherever the five one six area code is. JC loves the he loves your Atlanta Yankees hat. Juan Soto is raking. Tough loss for the Gators last night at FSU. Hopefully it's just a poor stretch and they pull out of this. Do either of you guys know if Sully's a Yankees fan because he's from New York? Wonder huh. if this has any connection to Florida baseball and the clean cut grooming policy they have, which I think is great. Yeah. 
Well, that I, hair's I gotten kind of long, so I don't know if they're. Gonna, yeah, I don't know the. Me. I don't know the answer to the question. I appreciate the sentiment on the Yanks. Uh, Alex Verdugo would typically wear five or six chains around his neck, especially when he played for the Red Sox last year. And Aaron Boone is allowing him one chain around his one neck. One chain is the policy. He gets one. He gets one chain. Everybody's shaving. The hair's not going everywhere. They don't look like a bunch of uh, you know uh, zombies out there. I. I just, I just, this team's got some makeup that I'm happy about, but I'm, I'm cautious because they always seem to get injured about June, July. We'll see. I don't. Know. I'm just happy. I mean, it's fun to be into it this early because, again, these games count just as much as the ones in September do. That they're all count. They all count the same. It, it matters. They, they do. You- but, but like I said in the past, you haven't said one damn thing on this show for the last five years about the Yankees early well, in the they, season. Well, they've been bad. They have not. Okay. Been well, that's why you haven't said anything. Joseph wants to know. Mm-hmm. What's the must see places while at Augusta? Oh, Augusta wow. National Golf Club. That's it. Okay. I like QB. Well, tell them what you think. Oh, I'll tell you. Let me just get this out. There's an area um, where the par three. Uh, I don't think he's asking about that. I think he's asking about the town of Augusta. Oh, the town. Well, so what I'm why- saying, he says, what's the must see places while at Augusta? I don't know what he's asking, but okay. if you're, if you, once you walk into the gates, Oh man, you got to you have to walk the entire golf course. Yeah, I, I would do to. that. Right, I would go right up the hill on one and just follow it around. But yes. one of my, some of my favorite spots are that is a, is a little pine straw area where thirteen and sixteen and seven a, a, a downhill par three all come together and people commingle and there are plenty of concessions and lots of room to spread out because there's a, a bunch of holes where people literally this is hard to believe but they do this. They sit there in these little spaces for about four to five hours and watch the Dolphins go by. I'm the kind of guy that likes to walk around and see everything. And that's I don't why I like to stay home and watch it because you can see air everything. You sure can. Yep. Uh, on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plumbing, Cameron says, I'm worried with NIL some of these non-revenue generating sports will go away, which is a shame. That is a that. fact. That is a fact. Away, huh? You think yes. that non-revenue? So you think men's golf and women's golf are going to go away? I think I think softball's in trouble. Mm. Um, really? Swimming is in trouble. I think everything outside of football, bas- men's basketball, and men's baseball are in trouble. Now I'm not talking about here. You know, I'm I'm talking about around the country and even here at the university. Um, mm. Look, I, I know for a fact that we lost. Some top, and this this has, I mean, it has to do with NIL from school to school. We lost some some girls in softball to South Carolina due to NIL. That brings me to uh, something that I heard yesterday, QB. I don't know if you care about this, but this was interesting to me. How in the NCAA men's and women's basketball tournaments, the viewership for the men's was just under fifteen million for the final game between UConn and Purdue. For the girls, it was over eighteen and a half million yeah. for a Sunday afternoon game between Iowa and South Carolina. We all know, I think, the attraction there and what it's meant to women's basketball. You got it. It won't be like that from now on until we no, find another probably, star. It, well, it probably won't be. I mean, you have the one defeated women's South Carolina Gamecocks. You have Caitlin Clark. Okay, but I think it goes to show you that. I wish they would do some better things with the men's game. I don't like the way the games are played in two halves. I wish they had four quarters. I don't like the way fouls are called. I don't like all the free throws. And I damn sure don't like starting a basketball game at 930. I have to raise my voice because a tractor with fertilizer is driving by. But you can't start these games at 925 at night, in my opinion, and expect to get a $20 million, a $20 million number you can't it's just, no you it's can't. it's dumb i mean monday night football learned that they moved their game to 8 15 eastern standard time and we're starting a basketball game at 9 20 makes no yeah. sense at all oh. silverback concrete builds firm foundations for generations you stand on it we stand by it we got jc on the titan more highline courtesy of comfort tent we'll have oh. mike morgan from the sec network later one more one more thing Favorites in the NCAA basketball tournament. Favorites. That means teams that were laying points on FanDuel, DraftKings, and all of the legalized sport wagering sites. The favorites in the NCAA tournament, leading with UConn, who was a double digit or who was a favorite and won by double digits in every single game, 
the favorites won 67% of the time in this tournament, which tells me that the seeding wasn't all that great, but that UConn was so good that they covered every single spread they played in. And the last two games they played against Alabama and against Purdue were single digit spreads and maybe the easiest bets you've ever won in your life. So the point that UConn set a point differential oh, this year in the tournament. It, and, it was like and go rip. back, go back to last year. Every every win they had last year was double digits. Every win this year was double digits. They kill Vegas. They have yeah. absolutely buried Las Vegas, and the Vegas guys got to get right because UConn is that good. They uh, will likely be back next year. They got a lot of guys so, under Glassman that are coming back. Watch out. So JC, guys. I'm I'm going to ask. Obviously, Mike Morgan knows has more prize scoop than we do. But, uh, you know, people are turning Kentucky down. Kentucky, obviously, we all know is not what it used to be. The lore there. Um, I mean, think about I, – I said Nate Oates was going to be one of their top choices, and he was. But not think about – just think about where the SEC is right now in basketball <laughs> when an Alabama head basketball coach turns down the Kentucky Wildcats to coach yeah. basketball. Think yes, about it. yes. Yeah, I, no, it's it's a good point. I, it's an excellent point. I'm going to throw the name out that we did not talk much about <clears throat> on Monday for this job, and that's uh, the and it's now kind of more known. Uh, is Scott Drew Baylor? I think they're really looking hard at him, and he could be their coach, and that would be an outstanding choice. Okay, so so correct me if I'm wrong. What conference is Baylor getting ready to be in? They're they're still in the Big Twelve. They will be in okay. The so they're going to stay over there. Yeah, I don't know if he takes that Kentucky job, but because Baylor's going to match it. Baylor's got probably more money than Kentucky. Yeah, it's a great school. It's a private school, small school, but got they a lot like of money. Lot. No, I, I agree with that. But you are talking about Kentucky. Baylor, and Kentucky. Okay, yeah. so but, but my question is: Baylor won a national title. I want to say him. he's probably played for a couple other been of the Final Four. I can't. I don't keep up with Baylor basketball, but yeah. he's been there twenty something years. He's done an outstanding job. Does he want to continue staying at Baylor and probably have a nice lifestyle? Is there pressure? Yes, but there's not the pressure in the moronic fan base that you have at Kentucky. But there is something about Kentucky that separates it from just about almost everybody, not all of them. But, that you know, when you when you talk about those schools, Kentucky, Duke, it's kind of like when you're a college coach and you've reached that pinnacle of leading one of those types of schools. I think you have gotten to the, uh, the top of the mountain, so to speak, when you're climbing up up the coaching mountain. And you're right. He's got it made at Baylor, but they play in front of 9,000 fans uh, at their home game. And They have a Kentucky, brand new building they're playing in, though. Well, okay, but it's not Rupp Arena. And right. so, I, I don't know. I Listen, I, I, I don't know what Scott Drew's going to do, but I wouldn't blame him one bit for either staying or going. I, would, I wouldn't think it's a bad move either. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see who they hire. Uh, Buck says Kentucky should call Bucky McMillan. Bucky's the kid, the young kid from St- Sanford that was, uh, that, man, that was coaching bad. high school ball like five years ago. It's got to be a name. It's got to be a splash guy to go there. You've got to have a name to go to a school like Kentucky. They're not going to, they're not going to uh, do a, uh, you know, uh, on the job training at, at no, it's, uh, this has got to be a big name. It will be a big name, and Kentucky fans will be happy. I'm pretty sure because I think, I think the Kentucky brass is pretty good. They're smart. They know what they want. And Calipari, look, I think it, it, everybody's happy. He had a stipulation in his contract that said if he wanted to leave, nobody had to pay. You know, nobody had to pay this or pay that. He could just go and bring his NIL guys and bring his transfers. And do whatever he wants. And that's where he's going, and Arkansas is better for it. I think it's a great hire by Arkansas. Yeah, Guy says, do you think they're going to uh, – their recruiting will stay strong during his co- this coaching change? I mean, Kentucky is Kentucky, but yep. you're going to see a lot of Kentucky kids take the money and go elsewhere. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a few of them show up in Arkansas. I did see where uh, he's going to have at least $5 million for NIL from the Razorback folks. Um which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is for basketball. You know, five million doesn't get you yeah, hardly anything in football. Might get you no, one player, that's <laughs> one or two players. Uh, but that that is a lot for basketball. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I you know, I I think the SEC is going to be so so fantastic in twenty four and twenty five as we admit these two schools coming in from the Midwest. I just think it's going to be so much fun watching the football. 
I, I can't wait till they go to nine games, which they have to do in 26. I keep harping on that. I think the playoffs are going to be tremendous. Basketball is going to be better with Oklahoma and Texas. There's no question about that. And baseball and all of these secondary non-revenue sports are going to be tremendous with Oklahoma and Texas. It's, it's just set up to be a tremendous, tremendous uh, thing to watch. And the schools like South Carolina and Vanderbilt, you know, these schools participate and win in certain areas, but they're going to have to get better in all areas. South Carolina's great in women's basketball. They're a dynasty. Vanderbilt's really good in baseball. They've won championships. But these kinds of schools are going to have to just pick up their game in the football area, in the basketball area, if they want to. Um, and, and they just, you know, they just gave uh, Paris a huge, a huge raise in South Carolina. They expect basketball to be better there. Now the pressure's on Beamer to make football better. It's going to be hard to compete. Florida has got to step it up as well. And Florida has done that with a good basketball season that ended not so great and a football team that has to get better to compete in this new conference. It's just going to have to happen. Otherwise, we're going to be forgotten. Um, JB says on Facebook, he read that Joe, uh, Graham Mertz joined Hawkstone. Why in the hell would he do that? <laughs> no, it was uh, we have a backup quarterback here. I don't think we have Graham Mertz. But I'll tell you what, if we do have Graham Mertz here, I'll do you a favor, QB, and say, the number is eight, Graham. He's going to go, what does that mean? Well, gonna I was going to ask him, has he played the golf course? Because nobody <laughs> joins that place. You're worried about the golf course. I want to say the, golf the course number is so bad, JC. Admit it. Let's say the number is eight. Okay, the number is eight. Well, yeah, listen, I flew such over. A bad golf course. Wait, hold on a minute, Mister Bad Golf Course. I flew over <laughs> the city-owned Ironwood facility on an airplane two days ago, and I didn't see anything green. I saw a lot of brown and a lot of nasty. Well, nobody said it was any good either. It's not. There's only good. one good golf course in Alachua County, and it's the University <laughs> of Florida. Mark, well, ba- Mark, look, and we had, we had Guy the lady, Boston. We had the Lady Boston Invitational over here. Yeah, what a mess that was. <laughs> it was anyway, great. Those girls loved no it. No grass, black, green, slow. What else do you want? No, we do have grass now. Fertilizer. In fact, that truck, that tractor just went by with fertilizer, QB. And we yeah. have recycled water here. Recycle. It's green. It's green. It's nice. It's the flat, grass. Flat, the flat, grass. flat, slow greens. Okay. Um, <laughs> David. <laughs> David says on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plumbing, oh. Texas and Florida will battle out for the best overall sports programs. Yeah, well, yeah like I said, you got to be careful. Some of these these uh, non revenues are going to end up going away, unfortunately. Um, so, Mike, you, what are the odds that Tiger Woods makes the cut? Better than two to one. Uh, I don't know what the <laughs> odds are, but I do not think he does. Okay, um, I have a story where. Okay, go ahead. Tell your story. Everybody My story. Wants to hear your story. Guy I had lunch with yesterday. His son owns a house in Aiken, South Carolina. That Tiger Woods is renting out for thirty five thousand dollars <laughs> for the well, week. That's what all the people that live in Augusta in that area they, they they make their living renting oh their houses God. out to it's spectators so- and the pros. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thirty five thousand Tiger, and you know if Tiger doesn't make the cut. Tiger may only be there three days. Around. He was probably <laughs> there Tuesday, Wednesday, Twelve. Thursday. <laughs> And he's probably going home Friday night. Could you imagine? Could you imagine saying to somebody, "Hey, man, hey, man, I got a place for you. You want to live? It's twelve grand a night. <laughs> it's twelve grand a night. Come on in, man. I just need twelve grand a night. Yeah, I'm out. I'm out of here. Place is ready yep. to roll. <laughs> All right, JC. It's time for Peachland Dentistry Gator Nation's oh. number one choice for dentistry. Port Charlotte, surrounding areas. Go visit them at peachlanddental.com. Our master's pick uh, last week. My guy. Uh, Tommy Fleetwood finished the highest of our picks. Uh, it was kind of a weird tournament. All right, JC, I got three well, guys here. I don't care yeah. if you pick the same ones. It's not going to matter to me. Okay. Uh, I don't have no rhyme or well, – I have a little bit of a reason why. But give me your first pick. <laughs> well, I mean <laughs> – I'll give you Okay, one Scotty pick. Scheffler. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm taking Scotty Scheffler too because he's the best player in the world. And as yeah. I've stated – He's the best ball striker to ever play golf. He's going to kill this place. Uh, All right. Well, then we both have him. All right. Let me go with another name, though, that I think is really going to step up. The the short game to me is very important here. And Wyndham Clark has one of the best in the game. So I'm taking Wyndham Clark. You're taking Wendy? Oh, is this short game? Wyndham Clark. Okay. I I know who you're going to take. You're going to take a live guy whose short game is just as good. I'm taking Hideki Matsuyama, former champ. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. He plays this golf course. Well, give me Cameron Smith 
because well, I think that's my other guy. guy. I mean, are we just going to pick the same guys? Well, I mean, I, I, I mean, that's that. I, I should have said Cam Smith a few minutes ago. You should have, but Cam I Smith. I don't like I said yesterday because I did this. I had this. I picked the same ones with Buddy because yeah. on yesterday's program, I have not seen Cam Smith. I know, and I've not seen him on TV. I guess since I the British Open, possibly. It's horrible. It's horrible. He is. He's the best putter in the world. So, good. and you got to put these greens now. He lives in Ponte Vedra. He loves to fish. I don't know if he's been fishing or putting or practicing, but if the dude hits greens, look out. Oh, absolutely. 1, All right, so let's pick somebody else since we got too many of the same ones. Okay, well, let's go with somebody else. And I'll, I'm going to take a name uh, that I think is going to break through. This guy's playing great golf. He doesn't. He hasn't won yet uh, a master, a major, but I think Xander Schauffele's game is really kicking in. And I like the way he played at TPC. I watched him. Uh, for about six or seven holes, just looked so in control of his ball and his swing and his game, much more consistent than Rory right now, I think. So uh, he can keep it out there as well as most of these other guys with distance. I'm taking a Xander Shoffley to maybe break through. I really like him. Yeah, I'm going to – I I hate picking live guys, but oh, I just – I like the demeanor and I like his game. I'm taking Kepka. Yeah, he's 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 a natural pick for this tournament. Like I said, I don't even know if these guys have been playing golf. They I, could have been sitting on the beach. For I got, all I know. Here's a name for you, um, local guy, Georgia Bulldog. If the rain doesn't make the course any longer than it already is, even if it does, he he won the British Open. Brian Harmon is a guy that nobody seems to ever talk about for some reason until say after the cut, but then once the cut is cut. And all of a sudden, there's Brian Harmon, three strokes back or in the lead. You you wonder why you don't pick him. And so I'm not wondering anymore. I'm going to pick him. Give me Brian Harmon. All right. I'm going to take one agent. Shocker. I'm going to go with Siwoo Kim. Yes, Siwoo. Would well, you well, think Siwoo will be Min, Min Woo Lee? <laughs> well, Min I Woo love Lee. Is, Min Woo Lee now. Well, he's Australian. He's Australian. Right. Right. But I, I don't know. I, you know, I guess he could. I see Wu had one great, great uh, weekend. That's pretty much what I see in him. But uh, he won a tournament a long time ago at TPC. You know, I just like the lefties, too, on this course. They're right to left. Everything is right to left. Now, if you don't draw the ball, that could be a problem. But some of these lefties can fade these shots. Everything is right to left. You want to have a left-handed guard. That's what Mickelson does so well. He's 56 or 7 right now. They Maybe say Scheffler – Plays the ball left I, or right, and he just oh, tears the golf course up. No, no, but Sheffield can also hit it right to John right. John Rahm plays the ball left or right. He's got a green jacket. No, so no. I hear what you're saying. These guys, yeah. they can hit the ball any damn way right. they want to hit it. They can. They can. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. But I don't think the I, – I, I just love the – the Brian Hunt. I just think he's going to do – and Bubba Watson. You know, Bubba Watson won this tournament twice. We really don't hear from him the rest of the year. But the reason why he won it is because of how good he can make that ball move right to left. So, having said that, we'll probably see somebody we haven't mentioned win the tournament. But then again, I think in a tournament like this, it's going to be a, a name. It's going to be a famous – it's going to be a former major winner to me. That's the way I'm going with this. I don't think it, a Matthew Pavon from France is going to win it or anybody like that. Max Homa, I don't see him winning it. I just think that we're going to see a former major winner win this thing, as usual. And if the rain slows down those greens or makes the course longer, Kepka's going to kill it. Scheffler's going to kill it. The long players are going to absolutely destroy this place. I think there's no defense for this golf course if it slows down. I agree. Pontevedra Bull Gator on the Titan and Mark text line says, nice payday for Tyson Alexander last week, 132K. Yeah. Yeah, Tyson, good kid. Uh, it's playing well on tour. All right, JC, we got to get somebody that knows a little bit more than All we right. do and doesn't, doesn't just blast a bunch of nonsense. I gave you good stuff today. I gave you good stuff with numbers and money, and I and, and I love the insight. And the boy. highest payroll is great, finally great. winning some baseball games. Congratulations, because y'all stunk the last the 15 years. Payroll. It's called the Dodgers, all right? And by the well, way, y'all are second, Ben. 27 right, That's JC. Join us on the Titan Amore Hotline, courtesy of Comfort Temp. Take a quick timeout. Come back, talk a little bit of sports with Mike Morgan from the SEC Network. You're watching, listening, pot up Matthews in the morning. We want to take this moment to thank our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our premium sponsors are Crime Prevention Security Systems, 
large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Melvin Law, the only official injury and accident law attorneys of the Florida Gators. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. QC Kinetics, live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Campus USA, put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. Comfort Temp, comfort is our business, peace of mind is our promise. Dave & Buster's Eat, Drink, Play, Watch. Radwear, your local provider of promotional products, uniforms, and apparel. Our gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Silverback Concrete, Ruse Ogre State Farm Insurance, Radwear, F45, Quality Plumbing. Our touchdown sponsors are Adams Ribs, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Gator Bait Media, Okito America, Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, Big Mills Cheese Steak, McDonald's of Gainesville, 84 Lumber, Dowling Signs, Baker Sporting Goods. If you're interested in promoting your business on the show, call Freddie at 352-284-3733. If you like what we're doing here, make sure to follow us and support the businesses that support us. Hi there, this is Coach Steve Spurrier, and I want to let you know that by popular demand, Spurrier's Gridiron Grill's delicious brunch is now served in a premium buffet. You have spoken, we have listened, and we're now serving Gainesville's only elevated buffet complete with an omelet station, ginger sage chicken sausage, shredded short rib, and of course, our chicken and waffles. Plus, you can enjoy bottomless mimosas and Bloody Marys. So join us every Saturday and Sunday from 11 to 3 for the best brunch in town. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Ruse Ogre State Farm offers a team of dedicated insurance professionals ready to help life go right with the right insurance options for you and your family. Visit ogreinsurance.com. Give them a call at 352-240-1779. Going to head back to the Titan MR uh, text uh, hotline. Courtesy of Comfort Temp and our man, Mike Morgan from the SEC Network. Good morning, Mike. How you doing, bud? Good morning. Uh, love listening to, to you and JC. Before I come on, uh, I, I've been telling telling you guys, JC, I'm coming after your backdrop. I'm, I'm uh, this. I call this Studio South or Studio Paradise. I'm down in Lake Worth, Florida, home of Brooks, Brooks Kepka, by the way, his hometown. And uh, I, I, I've got I, I don't have the birds chirping yet like JC normally has, but eventually I'm going to turn this setup around. You're going to see the water behind me. Nice. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to live the good life like JC does. We all try to be like JC. There's no <laughs> question very about true. It. Very true. All right, Mike, we got a lot to talk about today. Let's start with college basketball. No surprise with UConn winning at all. But I think the biggest surprise is Calipari huh. being the head coach of the Hulk. Yeah, I, I I don't even know. Let's start with Musselman leaving Arkansas. Can we start there? Right. So I had Arkansas a couple of times late. And as you know, Shane, when you're about to do a game for television, you, you meet with the coaches, you go to practice, you talk to them. And I'm not saying Eric Musselman checked out because his team fought to the very end. It wasn't a very good team, but he was a guy that hated his roster. Okay. He's a classic case of a guy who went to the portal and he came up snake eyes, right? They're all going for the seven. He came up snake eyes. It can happen to the best of coaches. But every time we talked to him late in the year, he sounded like a guy who just, he wasn't loving Fayetteville anymore. So I was not surprised that he moved, but, and that's, Really, what started this whole chain reaction was Enfeld going from Southern Cal to SMU. Well, that 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 right that there is surprising. Well, yeah, but you, here's the thing about SMU, and I, I've money. talked about this before. Lots of money, <laughs> tons of money. Yeah, I, I always say, Shane, you know, there's regular money, like every SEC fan base, is like I, you see that guy over there, like that man, he's big money right there. It's a good thing we got him as a booster. He's in our corner, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. You want to know real money? Oil money. That's real money a and chicken money. We'll get to that in a second. So, so yeah, SMU, the fact that they went to the ACC and basically said, we don't need your TV money. We're, we'll go ahead and we'll take the, we got, we got our own money. That was the ultimate baller move. Right. And that helps pave the way for getting a guy like Andy Enfield is saying they're not playing in the American. They're not playing in conference USA. They're playing in the ACC. Say what you want about the ACC, 
but that's a legit job. It's a legit basketball league. So that combined with the money gets Enfield there. That opens up Southern Cal. Uh, Muss has always been a West Coast guy. I think him and his wife wanted to, quite frankly, just live in a different locale. They go out West, and all of a sudden now Cal, $33 million is the reason why Kentucky didn't fire him. And then all of a sudden you've got a suitor. Go, Cal. uh, Take that job. And then now Kentucky is open, and you hear you're hearing every name under the sun for that job, including our boy Billy Donovan, which has already turned the job down twice. You know that's your home run hire, and only Billy knows if Billy wants to get back into college coaching. The only reason I wouldn't entirely rule that out, Shane, is that because I know Billy doesn't want to deal with recruiting, the old recruiting, but recruiting at Kentucky today is not even recruiting. It's just handpicking who you want and giving them a bunch of NIL money. You're not you're not having to, you know, stroke the ego of a father and tell him how great his son is and like go to his high school games for three years. You don't have to do that anymore. You're Kentucky and you got more NIL money than than anybody. So you you would still get pick of the litter players and he's a hell of a coach. So I, I it's a long shot at best, but I, I do think if Billy is tired of the NBA which I wouldn't blame them if he is. They're gonna they're gonna play in a, a play in game, I guess, uh, against the Hawks at some point. Uh, I don't know how much longer Chicago wants him and how much longer he wants the NBA. Yeah, I don't. I, I well, first of all, so who do you think they're going to end up hiring? I don't think it's going to be Bill. I, um, I my my odds on favorite would be Scott Drew. Scott Drew, yeah. Uh, Nate, they're you not know. getting Nate Oates and they're not getting Dan Hurley. No. So so. Once you start crossing names off the list, and every AD, including Florida's ADs over the years, has had to do this because every fan base thinks, "Oh, we, we're the we're the best in the world. We can get whoever we want." And certainly, Kentucky basketball fans feel that way because it's Kentucky. But no, you can't get whoever you want. That's not the way it works. Other schools have money. Other schools have things going for them. And I think Kentucky it might be their third or fourth choice but i think scott drew based on his buyout being lower and i've been to waco have you been to waco i i'd much rather be in lexington than waco shane um so maybe that's that's the odds on favorite at this point yeah uh somebody asked here your thoughts on reed shepherd do you think he goes pro now oh 100% and he's going to be a lottery pick yeah he's gone He'll be in the top 13, which constitutes the uh, the lottery. And I think his game will actually translate very well to the NBA level. He and Dillingham will both be lottery picks. Yeah, I agree with that. Totally. Um, you had you wanted to talk a little bit about uh, college baseball a little bit. Yeah, I'm just going to mention one thing. You know, I, I I I I know every local show and I go on a, a couple others. You, you got to go you know, into the weeds on on everything. And I. I, I would just throw this out to Florida fans. <clears throat> I'm sure, you know, it's it's frustrating the way the season's going. I didn't see the the game last night against Florida State. What was the final? How what was, I think I know 19 it was to 4 or something like that? Oh gosh, yeah. Um it, the the Florida's not hitting the way they ordinarily uh, would or should. I get it and I look at them and I've got their conference numbers here which to me we've played 12 conference games. So now these numbers are relevant. So they're second to last with a 232 average in uh in hitting. And they're not scoring runs. They're second to third to last in uh in runs scored in SEC play. That being said, Shane, to me, the DNA of Sully's teams and why they've been so good over the years is the dominating pitching. And when I look at a Florida team that has a 5-3-3 ERA in SEC play, that's a little bit dis- uh, disturbing to me and shocking, quite frankly. You know, mm-hmm. to put it in perspective, Arkansas is at 2-8-3. Kentucky's at 3.09. These are SEC numbers now. It's not, you know, bullying up on midweek games, which I know has been a a story in Gainesville as well. But here's another thing that I found interesting. Five of the seven, uh, excuse me, five of the SEC teams in conference play have an ERA of over seven. Alabama, Georgia, Ole Miss, Auburn, and LSU have staff ERAs of over seven. I was talking to a buddy of mine who's a longtime SEC umpire, and I'm not going to say his name because I don't think he'd want that known. And I've noticed this the last couple of years. There's a thing called TrackMan, which is just mm-hmm. this. They grade their umpires based on a computer. 
and a computer tells you whether or not the pitch was a ball or a strike. So that on a 3-0 count, that pitch that you throw at the guy's nipples that's right over the center part of the plate that used to be called a strike, that umpire now knows if he's going to get good assignments, he's got to call that a ball because track band's going to call it a ball. That that O2 pitch that's a, an inch off the plate that you should be swinging at with an aluminum bat and should be called a strike, well, now you got to call it a ball. It's really frustrating to watch major league arms getting squeezed like that. And the problem is you you, you can't call college baseball that way. You, you just can't. But they're all scared to death to call a pitch they normally would call a strike a ball. It's it's an epidemic to me right now in college baseball, and I think it's ruining the product. I, the, the strike We don't have robots back there. And here's the other thing that people don't talk about. Unlike the MLB computer system, TrackMan – doesn't consider height. So what are you, Shane? Six three, give or mm-hmm. take. Okay. So if you got the middle infielder, I don't know who the shortest guy is in the Florida lineup. Uh, maybe a middle infielder who's like five ten. The the track man has the same vertical strike zone for the five ten middle infielder and the six three mm-hmm. Shane Matthews. That's, That's not right. Yeah, no, it's flawed. Nice. It's absolutely flawed. They, so it's not even an accurate assessment. The strike zone should be different based on the hitter. I mean, that's it's, it's been that way since the game was invented. So I think it's something they really uh, have to look at and and figure out how they're going to improve because it's we don't have that many staff ERAs over seven because there's not enough good pitching in the SEC. We all know better. Uh, but I, I think the strike zone in the last, and I've seen it firsthand the last couple of years, it's just taken a turn for the worse. Radware is a family-owned business that prides itself in excellent customer service while providing quality and affordable promotional products and customized apparel. we got Mike Morgan from the SEC Network just talking a little bit of everything. The Gators sit at 6-6, six and six, which is middle of the pack. I mean, you, you win the series this week, and then, you know, people are feeling pretty good. South Carolina comes in. They're 6-6 six and six as well. Um, you also do a podcast on your own. Y'all been talking a lot of college quarterbacks. Yeah, it's uh, JC and Morgan, and uh, I encourage any of you folks that just want to get your healthy dose of of college football. Obviously, you get it on this show. More specifically, you get Gator football on this show each and every day. Uh, we, we talk SEC. We talk nationally. Just in the last four weeks alone, we've had Ross Dellinger, Andy Staples, Tim Brando, and Tom Luganbill yesterday. One of the things we were talking about is the SEC quarterback crop, and – we, we broke it down, Shane. One through 16, there's eight returning starters. And, I mean, some of those are, like, really established guys, like a Carson Beck, like a Quinn Ewers, like a Jalen Milrow. And then you have eight newbies. Uh, and, and I think if you look at it, the 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 it's not just a little gap. It's a chasm between the teams this year. Obviously, Graham Mertz will be in this uh, group, and I'm with you. He, Lagway might be the future, but he ain't playing over Mertz this year. No. I, there's just no way. Like, I don't know. That's that's where people get fixated on stars and everything else. Um, but the teams that have the returning starters, with the exception of maybe like a Thorn at Auburn, who nobody was overly impressed with last year, the teams that have the return, they have a major advantage because there's a whole lot of, I don't know, with the other programs, like South Carolina's got a Lenora Sellers. They love his ability. They think he can be outstanding. But you don't know until he hits the field. He's thrown like 20 passes in college. So I I think what's going to be really interesting this year, the haves and the have-nots, the the eight programs that have a returning starter at quarterback, for the most part, six, seven out of those eight have a massive advantage over the eight programs that are breaking in new guys. No, I agree uh, 100% with that. Anytime you have a veteran guy that's produced – and won games, it's going to help you. It, it's going to be interesting. Um, you know, there's I, I can't tell you how many people ask me about Lagway, and I'm like, look, he's talented, but he's not going to play this year. He might get in a little bit like Tebow did as a freshman uh, for some runs and a series here or there, but I don't see it being a whole lot, quite honestly. No, I mean, like – like we were debating Jackson Dart, who's another one of those returning guys, and and some people wanted to call him a um, a system quarterback, and I'm like, you know what, oh, he's that, damn good, he's pretty damn good, and whether you want to call him a system quarterback or not, he knows that system. Lane Kiffin's system is coming back, and Lane Kiffin, they they just crushed the portal. They're the number one portal uh, team in college football. Uh, that you know what you're getting there. 
So call him what you will. They're going to put up ridiculous numbers, and he's going to have a hell of a season. Whereas if if uh, let's say Lagway was this, let's say Graham Mertz, God forbid, goes down with an injury in week one, and Gator fans or you see Lagway trotting on the field at the swamp, and you're like, yes, this is the five star guy, this is our savior. He is going to take lumps, man. I mean, he he is not going to go out there and just light the world on fire. That that is that is so few and far between that actually happens that way. Uh, it, you, Graham Mertz is an established guy who, despite the fact of everything that was going against him last year in Gainesville, and there was a lot, as you saw, uh, he, he was one of the more consistent quarterbacks in this league. Now, you lose Pearsall, and I tried to tell people last year, and I'm sure you did too, Shane, that that dude's an NFL wideout. And they looked at him like, I don't know. He just, no, that dude's going to – well, they have him projected like second-round pick. Like he, he, he's going to make a long living in the NFL. So you lose a really talented wideout. But I have to think that a number of other things around Mertz are going to be better this season. And I would just remind Gator fans, be happy you've got a returning guy who you know can play at this level as opposed to, say, eight of the programs in this league that are going to have to break it, break bread with a new quarterback that you don't know what's going to happen when the bright lights come on in the SEC. Yeah, I want to go back to this with the where you talk about the system quarterback. Yeah, in my opinion, every quarterback is a system of their right, right. is a quarterback of their system. You know, they all talked about the uh, the Spurrier quarterbacks. Did we put up a lot of numbers? Yes, because we were in a great system. Did Tommy Frazier put up a lot of numbers running the option at Nebraska? Yes, he was a system quarterback. Carson Beck's in a great system for him. You put Carson Beck in one of these spread type. Uh, you know, run oriented. He's where the quarterback's supposed to run. He's not going to be very good. So I think Jackson Dart is outstanding for what Lane wants to do. Um, Graham does exactly what Billy wants him to do. So uh, I've never Look, understood the whole system thing because you go to a school that fits what you do. Of course, uh, but you're being a little bit humble. So I'll say it for you. Uh, how many years in the NFL? 15? 14, you? somehow. 14. I don't know how. Okay. Well, I know how uh, you 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 had the ability to perform at that high a level where there's only, you know, nowadays teams are rolling out there with just two active quarterbacks on their roster yeah. for a game. So there's only like 64 of those guys doing it. You were one of them for 14 freaking years. Uh, Rex Grossman, how many years was he in the NFL? So it's not like it was just system quarterbacks for, for Steve Spurrier. Uh, he had a lot of talented guys that had next level ability. I mean, the, the, I was there for Werfel and I always said, I don't think that release is going to work in the NFL and long-term it didn't. And that's, that's a credit to Danny, but Danny was a great college quarterback with great college ability. It wasn't, mm -hmm. you, you can't just throw anybody in a system and it works. So I'm with you. When I hear that, it's like when I hear game manager, it drives me yeah. crazy. The, the game manager that is the way that some of the pundits in our industry that that believe the only way you can be a great quarterback anymore is if you run all over the place like a chicken with your head cut off. And there, then that makes you a great quarterback. But if you're a pocket guy that reads and makes the right plays, oh, well, th then you're a game man. No, 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 no. That doesn't make you a game manager. Game manager to me is a guy that plays in a super run-heavy offense and is only asked to throw the ball a few times, like on third down. That's a game manager. Being a pocket passer and being able to dissect the defense and beat you with your arm instead of your legs, that's not game manager. That's a winning quality, good quarterback. Yeah, that's that's real quarterback play, quite honestly. Yeah. Um, we have a couple of people want to know. Uh, Tony asked here on Facebook Live, brought to you by Mel Lowell. Do you think KJ Jefferson will be better at UCF than he was at Arkansas? No, I'm going to tell you this. Um, when, whenever I'm in Arkansas and I ask, uh, uh, I ask a lot of questions about their football program because I think I think it's fascinating what they're going to go through this year with Petrino as the OC. KJ Jefferson is one of the most erratic, inconsistent. He just the arm talent is not there. And if you right. haven't figured if you haven't figured it out by now, Shane. He ain't going to figure it out. Um, so, and he's not that great a runner, you know, no, he's and not... I think, you know, his last couple of years, he put on so much weight that yeah. he, he, he became a worse runner. In my opinion, I, I don't agree. know what kind of shape he's in right now. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, 
I think he went backwards after his first totally year agree. started. I think he regressed. I would I would absolutely agree with that. So I look, all due respect to UCF, I don't think he's like Dylan Gabriel type guy. I don't I just don't think he's that good. I don't think you can count on him to make accurate throws in critical spots of games. All right, before we get you out of here, Mike, uh, the Masters this week, I don't know if you've ever been to Augusta National. It's one of my favorite sporting events. It's the prettiest place on earth. Yes. Who do you think wins? And have you ever announced golf? Because I know uh, <laughs> Taylor, Taylor Zarzar, he he does some uh, some announcing, I think, uh, of the PGA Tour, if I'm not mistaken. Am I, am I correct on that? Yeah, I think he does some um... – some radio for golf. I know he's a big golf guy. Uh, I've never done golf. And honestly, you know, football, basketball, baseball is in my wheelhouse since I was a student there and at Weimar Hall in Gainesville. Those are the three sports I love the most. I've done track and field. I've done um, fighting. I've done like ultimate fighting type stuff, which I enjoy. I've never done golf and I don't think I'd be good at it. I just don't. There is a certain so much of it is what you don't say as a golf announcer. Right. I mean, so, so much of it is just shutting the hell up, which a lot of announcers need to do more of in football, quite frankly. Um, no, I haven't. Yes, I'll be watching. No, I haven't been to Augusta. And I'm embarrassed to say that as someone who has mm -hmm. lived most of their life in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina. And I've been invited multiple times, but I'm always I've always been working baseball and I just always had to say no. I've literally had free passes offered to me, Shane, and had to say no and I regret it immensely. It's on the bucket list. I've played Pebble Beach, pretty proud of that, but I've never been to Augusta, and I need to get there right quick. Yeah, you have to go. Uh, Mark on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plum, says, is Bruce Pearl an option for Kentucky? I would not be surprised if, if they swing and miss on all the other guys, including Scott Drew. Uh You'd be crazy not to make a phone call and just gauge Bruce's interest. Bruce at Kentucky would be you. People called Cal's thing a circus. It would be a circus on steroids, and I mean that in a good way. I think Bruce is a hell of a coach, but he also knows how to sell a program and get people excited. Uh, I just. Auburn, to me, is still one of the most difficult jobs in the league. And what he's done mm -hmm. there is nothing short of miraculous. A Final Four, multiple SEC, SEC championships. But when Kentucky comes calling, gosh, that would be tempting. So I, I'm going to say no, but I'm going to say Bruce is, is human and would certainly listen to what Kentucky had to say if that call is made. Yeah, I agree with that. Mike, great stuff as always, my friend. Uh, let everybody know again how they can check out your podcast. Yeah, JC and Morgan. We record it live every Monday or Tuesday morning. Uh, we're on YouTube, Spotify, uh, Google Play, iTunes, Facebook, Twitter. It's free, just like this great program. And we do it once a week. And it's 90% college football year-round. We don't take any weeks off. And the great thing about the offseason is we have a lot of great guests. we got to get you back on there soon, Shane. Uh, so if you like college football, I think you'll like the show, and we encourage you to come on and uh, and have a good listen. Good stuff, my man. Uh, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week. You got it, Shane. Enjoyed it. Mike Morgan from the SEC Network uh, on the Titan Number Hotline. He's brought to you by Campus USA Credit Union. Live a healthier lifestyle with our bowl, flavorful smoothies, and our amazing food. Tropical smoothie. When you eat better, you feel better. Let's get to this day in sports before we get out of here. Brought to you by Campus USA Credit Union. Put some star power to work in your financial life at Campus USA Credit Union. Uh, this is the Masters in 2017. Sergio Garcia beats Justin Rose of England in a sudden death playoff. After they completed 72 holes at minus nine, it was Garcia's first major title in his 74th attempt. That's brought to you by Campus USA Credit Union. Softball tonight. Uh, I think they play Stetson here. And then um, they'll head off to Missouri. Baseball host, South Carolina, big series. Win the series, you're right back in it. That's all I can say. So, yeah, we have not pitched well. We have not hit well, bottom line. Uh, I mean, batting like 200 in the league play is not very good. ERA in league play at five-something is not good at all. So it's a combination. It's a full team effort. And um, – Hopefully I can get it turned around this weekend. Have a great day, folks. Enjoy the part three contest if you watch that. It's usually pretty cool. They got their kids out there. Uh, but have a great day.
Take care.